you all know I'm not the biggest fan of Chip and Joanna Gaines. Well, I do like them as people. Nothing against, you know, them as people, even though they do say babe and baby a lot. After watching this castle series of Fixer Upper, I it was kind of hard to listen because they would say babe or baby every second like babe babe look at this uh yeah i mean maybe one day i'll turn into a babe type no i don't want to do that if i do that i'll let you know babe babe can you make me some toast no okay anyways yeah i do like them as as people but normally i don't love a lot of what they do design wise on fixer upper i mean it's not terrible but i'm never you know wowed or super impressed by what they do but we have indeed turned a cheek a little bit with this new series called fixer upper the castle where chip and joanna Gaines go in and restore this old castle in waco texas and i'm actually impressed and i do like the outcome but what's interesting about this castle is they actually put it up for auction it was listed for 2.9 million but this auction is a no reserve auction so that means it kind of just goes to the highest bidder which which i feel like it's going to bid more than 2.9 million actually let's look at this auction was held on july 20th so i wonder if they have if they announced who who got it and for what price so i guess uh when that comes about i'll put that down in the comments so we can keep it keep an eye but anyways it's a pretty amazing transformation what they did and what I loved most about it is that their whole goal when when I watched this I listen I did watch fixer upper the castle well I watched the first episode I fluffed through the middle and then I watched the last episode but what I loved most about the whole process was their goal to restore it to its natural state I have critiques but I also have a lot of good things to say about this little guy. It's good. It's good. Check out the show. It's pretty entertaining. You will hear a lot of babe and baby though. Babe, babe, will you pass me the hammer, baby? Baby, pass me the hammer. Okay, I can't I can't even do it. I can't even do it. Um there's a nice like 3D tour that we're gonna go through. This historic castle in Waco, Texas. Everything's in Waco, you know, with Chip and Joanna. It's kind of like a tourist destination now. It's kind of wild. But anyways, this historic castle, they built it for $75,000 back in, you know, 1920 or 1913, finished in 1920, which is equivalent to 2 million now. So it's 4,300 square feet. It's four bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms and eight fireplaces, which why don't we do that anymore? They also tried to restore as much as possible which was really cool to see they didn't demo a lot which actually was very upsetting for chip that was a whole thing of him not being able to demo because joanna was very key about keeping as much as possible they also tried really hard to repair the wood floors throughout the the entire house but you know after years of sanding down and restaining there there does come a point where you kind of hit the bones of the wood floors that they're just not salvageable so they did rip up a majority of the wood floors but what they replaced it with was just identical wood floors they kept the dark tone chip actually wanted to go with a light toned wood and joanna fought to keep the dark she did she did a great job what's interesting about this castle is actually the location the location isn't very ideal you can see like snippets of it in in the show and it's kind of like this weird abandoned yard and like you can see there's like maybe like strip malls I, I think there's like a car dealership in the back they said and also what I found interesting about this whole project in general is whoever buys this castle it's kind of going to be a spot people are going to come look at in Waco now that Waco is this like tourist destination so if you live here people might show up they actually restored a lot of the limestone I think it is or whatever the brick is uh on the front they did some like wash on it that just made it look nice and fresh and new and I think it turned out nice they also replaced a lot of the paneling on the windows which you just like have to do there's only so much you can keep at its original state. I actually was kind of 
lolling at these photos where they went in to the before project and added these like giant floral arrangements which it's like it's pretty but it's also just like what's going why why are there why is there giant floral arrangements on uh this unrenovated place but but yeah the before was it's a it's a giant project and now let's look at the after because we I found this like virtual tour that we can go on. I don't know if we can go out into the yard though. Can I go out into the yard? Joanna did say this entry hallway was the easiest to restore. If you look at the before, it's kind of just the same. And look at all the wood paneling they kept. And I will say they kept a majority of this dark wood paneling on the walls that I thought they would, you know, if she was doing this project years ago, I don't know if they would have done that. But I do like this little entry. I think it's nice. When people have a little entry hallway, I think it's kind of rare. The light fixture, this is the thing you'll see throughout this tour, is all the light fixtures are really kind of what I don't love. They're not bad, but they do feel like Target Magnolia. Let's go into, oh, not that way. This is kind of the drawing room, I guess it was called, back in the day. And they restored everything to keep all of the original molding. And I do weirdly like that they painted the wood paneling because this dark wood is throughout the entire house. And I think in certain areas, it's nice to brighten it up. Would I have chosen that gray? Maybe not. I feel like if anything, I would have gone with a more of like a mushroom color or I don't know what I would have done in particular, but I think it looks nice. And I do think this room needed to be lightened up a little. But again, like those sconces, like they're fine, they're good, but you'll notice the light fixtures are kind of the only thing that really throw me off. But I love how they kept all of these heater things. I don't know if those even like necessarily work, but it's a good little design touch to keep those. Yeah, see that light fixture, not a huge, huge fan. The other thing I wanted to comment on when going through this tour is the staging. The staging is good in some areas and then not so good in others. For instance, this sofa, this coffee table, just kind of, you know, and the chairs are fine. You know, like this little side table. It's staging. So we can't judge too hard because how much money do you really put into that? You know, and it's better in other rooms. For instance, this room that we're about to enter, this insane dining room is so good. I like how they did it all dark. I know that's kind of like a trendy thing right now to do really dark rooms, but I think it looks really good. And all the fireplaces in this entire house are pretty, pretty crazy. The light fixtures seem okay. They seem okay. I, I'm just going to critique every light fixture. And she did do a little wallpaper above the paneling, which I like. It's kind of like a general wallpaper which is fine. But again, they did put a ton of money into this place. So am I really going to critique like a less unique wallpaper? No. And they did just such a good job restoring everything that whoever buys this place, if they don't love certain aspects, it's super easy to change most of the stuff they will love. But like if they wanted to switch out some light fixtures or wallpaper, everything else is pretty much golden. There's not much more you have to do. That's why I love this place so much is because the bones are so good that it's really easy for me to picture the small things I would do or how I would decorate this place. This is the addition they put onto the house. I don't think you can go wrong with checkered flooring. I know I say I don't like checkers. For instance, this type of checker, the 60s diner look, if you turn the checker on its side and make it more of a diamond, that's classic. That's classic flooring that you never can really go wrong with. But anyways, this is such a good addition this was really the only addition they did to the to the house and i really like it all right back into the dining formal dining room this is actually the dining area just in general this is there's no kitchen dining and then dining room this is it i like that concept of having just one space for dining unless it's like a small breakfast nook or something i just feel like dining rooms don't really get a lot of use and you might as well use that space for something else. Okay, now we're gonna go into the kitchen, which again, they had to build it out. Before, I think it was just, you know, like some random rooms. I don't know exactly what they were used for. You see the butler's pantry back here. And then I guess this is the kitchen. So I guess you couldn't technically knock down walls. I don't know, I thought they might've done something to make this a giant 
kitchen or knock down some type of wall to make this big but they didn't and I'm happy about that and they just made it into two separate rooms I didn't realize how far away actually the butler's pantry is from the kitchen but I think it still works and it's something I would have done the same thing but again okay the kitchen is great they kept this giant armoire thing that they restored I think keeping all the dark wood in here, but having some lighter wall space and lighter ceiling. The lighter cabinets is really nice and it's right off the foyer, which I think is great. I wanna take a quick break to talk about today's sponsor that I'm very excited about because I have used this product in my work, in my life in general. I love this product and that is Swiss Army Knife. The original Swiss Army Knife by Victoria Knox. It's a classic. Everyone should have one. It has been around for almost 130 years, which is pretty wild. The design of the Swiss Army Knife has actually been honored and has won countless awards throughout the years. It's made in Switzerland. It has a lifetime warranty. And what's also cool about it, it is made from 95% recycled steel. There's the Huntsman, which retails at $49.99 and has 15 functions. It has a bottle opener, a can opener, a little screwdriver. The Classic SD retails at $21.99 and has seven functions. I keep the Classic SD in my purse because it has a nail file, it has little tweezers. And then there is the Recruit Swiss Army Knife. This one retails for $23.99 and has 10 functions. This one has two types of screwdrivers, two types of blades, it has a wire stripper. Again, a can opener, a bottle opener. This is perfect for camping, in my opinion. I think all three of these come in handy in different ways and you can pick which one suits your needs I guess so make sure to go check out the Huntsman the classic SD and the recruit Swiss army knives down below link is in description and thanks again Victoria Knox for sponsoring this video they ended up keeping this little cabinet and making it into a little spice cabinet and then they added in a really nice oven that I I really like this stovetop oven thing it is feels like it fits into the house nicely and I like how it's cut into the back of where this old fireplace thing used to be I really like the way they restored this kitchen with all the open shelving and the marble and the dark wood. Again, the light fixtures are just, you know, fine. And then if you go through this back hallway, which I believe this is a door to the outside, and then this is now kind of the second half to the kitchen, which it's a little far away, but I like it in a weird way. And this is kind of where you store all of your food, do all the cleaning, and they kept the original fireplace and they actually kept the original color which is interesting because you would think they would do something to that and also I might be wrong on this but in one of the episodes they do talk about keeping some of the old light fixtures that were originally with the house and I think that's one of them I like this direction more than like the brassy magnolia target direction and also on the ceiling you see these upgraded boob lights that look like they belong on ships and you'll see them throughout the house and I do like those and I wonder if the brass will age because that would look a little nicer back here they have a little bathroom and they do restore the bathrooms really oh interesting that there's a window from the bathroom into the little atrium or whatever this room is but they restored the bathrooms pretty nicely I they do a lot of marble um subway tile with a molding on top also for instance let's see if we can zoom in on this they keep a lot of the old light fixtures which are really cool my parents actually have some of these in their chicago place which was is a very old spot as well but again yeah all of this a little too modern of a touch or i don't know it's not bad i'm not i'm not hating on it oh look up here there's one of their original light fixtures see i feel like they should have went more in that direction instead of you know I, i'm saying it over and over again the magnolia target brass but um, okay, moving on. Now let's go upstairs. We're taking the back stairs. Well, this is kind of trippy. We'll come back down. No, what's going on? Oh, there's also a basement that you will like. They gutted the whole thing. It's pretty good. Come on, bring me up. One more. No, how do I go upstairs? No, now I'm going downstairs. Oh my God, I'm getting dizzy. All right, we are upstairs. I don't know if it needs carpet on the stairs, but I don't know, carpet, I always go back and forth on carpet, but I do feel like sometimes when there's like a lot of wood flooring, it's nice to have some on the stairs at least. Oh, you can go up again. All right, well, let's check out. Let's check out, I'm a little confused where we are in the layout. Okay, this is, they call it the girls room, which I think is nice. I think it's, um, it's a nice size room. Again, you could do anything with this room and the only thing that, 
you would have to maybe tweak is the wall color because all of this is staging furniture. It all gets moved out and you could replace the curtains and paint it and make this room whatever you want. They did such a good job at restoring it to a point where you could do whatever you want to any of these rooms. They also have a fireplace. Every room has an amazing fireplace. I think it's trendy right now to paint the trim. In this room, I do like that they kept the white trim and didn't just paint everything pink, which they do in like some other rooms. With the fireplace, they painted it all pink. I think I would have done something different. They kept the original tile, which I love, and I think it complements the pink room really nicely. I don't love that brass outing that they added to it. And um, the fixtures are fine. It's just, I guess that's another thing you would have to replace. Also, keep in mind, they kept a lot of the vintage feel. I don't think these are actually, I don't think these doorknobs actually came with the house, but keeping those to look like they go with the rest of the house is great they didn't put some like weird sleek brassy knob here is the little boys room see they did paint all of the trim the same color which i think is just trendy i don't hate it but it's just kind of like a thing right now and yeah again the light fixture i don't know if i necessarily would have done but i think the room is really cute and yeah painting the door all green i do like it again a great space that you could kind of design whatever way you want this is kind of just the way that they did it and they also keep a lot of the original wood on the doors and then some doors they paint and I'm not against that because there is a lot of wood in this house and I do think she did a nice job deciding what rooms get the wood and what rooms need some brightening because it is a little a little dark you know Joanna said that this is her favorite bathroom I think it's overdone with the brass which is fine and the green is good but again you could paint that if you weren't a fan the floor does have green in it and I think I think it's nice I do think there's a little bit too much brass and I love this hanging shower curtain where it like goes all around they do a nice job with bathtubs would I say this is my favorite room in the entire house no I wouldn't I wouldn't say that oh there is a spot in the basement though that I I think could be one of my favorite rooms and you'll know why once we get there here's a little bookshelf in the hallway that they kept and added in a ladder that I, I wouldn't think she would get rid of that also okay that light fixture bad bad light fixture they could have done something really good there and then you do see the boob lights a little more and I, I am a little thrown off with how like gold they are I think if they were just dark brass I think it would have looked better but I'm not against those I bet those will go out of style it'll be like another boob light thing in the future this is the primary bedroom and I do like how she brightened it up I don't know if it needed to have the dark wood in here am I a fan of the color they chose not really but I think a lot of people would be and they did add some like textured wallpaper to the ceiling which I think does go nicely with the house I don't know if I necessarily would have chosen it and again I'm not even I can't go into the light fixtures again because we all know where I stand on those and this bathroom they completely added on. This used to be the closet, I guess. And they kind of stuck with this marble subway tile theme. And I do like how there's the bathtub in the shower. Pretty unique. And it's in this like crazy outlook, which is pretty stunning. I would like to take a bath here. I do like the marble subway tile. I think it just goes nicely. And especially with the, the trim, it really helps it. But this was a fully designed bathroom that they did. This area, like, I love the the vanity, but the mirror and the tile behind it, I wouldn't say I necessarily love. Okay, let's go down these staircases. They have, like, a little, a little sitting area right here. That's fun. It's like the little castle part. Going back through this stunning little home, the cute little kitchen. Very nice. More European, less farmhouse. We love that. Okay, down to the basement. This used to be where their kitchen was. This really worn, torn down basement. It definitely needed like a full gut renovation. Basement flooring is tough because you can't always do wood down there. Sometimes it, you actually can't. But they did tile and I don't, I don't despise the tile. If you're going to do a good tile in a basement, like I like how it kind of worn feeling and not stark. So... It's good and you definitely need a lot of rugs. This is the entertainment center, which I I like that. There's like a TV room in the basement and then there's a the sitting room upstairs. I don't love hanging out in a basement, but they did it they did it well. I never wanted to hang out in my basement. 
back in Geneva and we like always tried to make it feel good and it just never did. The ceiling fan is interesting. If they could have done wood down here, I think it would have made a huge difference. Then this is the guest bed, another vintagey wallpaper, which is nice. This is cozy though. And I like how the, the windows have these little ledges that you can put, you know, little trinkets on. It's fine. I'm just never going to be ecstatic about a basement, but I think they did it. They did it nice for, for what you could. I'm trying to find this. They have a laundry room down here. And a laundry room in the basement. Listen, that might be annoying because all the bedrooms are a lot further up. So I don't know if I necessarily would have put the laundry room in the basement. I probably would have found a way to put it up on the third floor, I guess. I remember when my parents were getting our second house when we moved, they we're pretty adamant about having the laundry room on the floor of the bedrooms, the second floor. I guess this would be, the, that would be the second, third floor, whatever. It just makes it a lot easier. I would say this might be my favorite room in the house. They made this game room slash cigar room and they completely restored exactly how it was. It had all of this wood to begin with. And then they added carpet in here, like full carpet, which I actually like. I don't know necessarily if I like that plaid, but I do like it in a weird way, but this seems like such a fun, dark room to hang out in. They did replace the tile on the fireplace, which I did like the tile before. It probably was too green or like too bright of a green, I would assume for Joanna. And also sometimes you really can't even like restore the tile. It's like too cracked. I don't know if that tile with the, with the carpet I would necessarily choose and same with that light fixture, but I love the floor to ceiling wood paneling that most people would probably paint white and she didn't. She's come such a long way, you know? This didn't feel modern farmhouse to me, which is um, surprising. Let's go back upstairs. It felt European, which is what she wanted it to feel. It does still like have the modern farmhouse touches, but I think she did, this is probably her best project yet. I mean, her and Chip, but I know she has like a lot to say in like the design aspects of things. I think she did a really nice job. My only critiques were super fixable. This would be a place that I, you know, could potentially be interested in buying. You know, I, I do love an old house like this, but I also go back and forth on like a mid-century house, to be honest. Like I love, I don't, there's so many areas in design to love. That's why I like try to mix as much as I can. Like if I got this place, I think I would add in certain touches that feel a little opposite of the space, but she did a great, they did they did a great job restoring this. Would you all agree? I think I think we would all agree that she did a great job. Now I'm obsessed with Chip and Joanna Gaines. I feel like it's going to sell for well over what it's listed at, at 2.9 mil, just because it's an auction and everything's kind of done for you. And you get to own a Chip and Joanna Gaines property. But the people do need to know, if you if you live in this place, you probably will get you're, you're kind of a tourist attraction in a weird way. I will post updates in the comments if something comes up of what it sold for, what what's going on. I'll pin a comment. I don't know why it hasn't announced. It ended four days four days ago, five days ago. This is just a this is a project that makes me feel good that they're doing stuff like this because so many people draw inspiration from their stuff. And now they're kind of showing you to like, maybe not knock down a wall. Maybe don't paint all of the wood white. Not every house needs shiplap. All right. Goodbye. See you next week. I might start doing Wednesday videos again. Like shorter Wednesday videos. We'll see. Just keep an eye. They might pop up in the next few weeks. You never know. You never know. Okay. Goodbye.